Hello and welcome to the Flashlight Podcast brought to you by KentStateSports.com and GFTV. I'm your host, Tyler Henry. Let's start off by introducing you to the format of the podcast. We'll give some recent scores and storylines from around athletics and sports in season and an in-depth interview or two from our student athletes, coaches, and administrators. Then we'll wrap it all up with a look ahead to some upcoming major events for our Golden Flashes. Kent State field hockey team went into the weekend with an opportunity to emerge atop the MAC, and they capitalized in style, knocking off Miami of Ohio 1-0 in the final home game of the season. Maria Cambra scored in the sixth minute to put the Flashes on top, and the defense suffocated the Red Hawks en route to a big conference victory. While the field hockey team took care of business at home, volleyball traveled to take on that school down the road in round two of the Crystal Clinic Wagon Wheel Challenge. The team dominated on Friday, defeating the Zips in a clean sweep before finishing the job with a hard-fought 3-2 victory on Saturday, securing big points in the Crystal Clinic Wagon Wheel Challenge for the Golden Flashes. And finally, the Kent State women's soccer team returned to Kent on Sunday, looking to cap off an undefeated home weekend for the program, hosting Ball State on Senior Day. Senior Carly Hellstrom got the flashes on the board early in the first half, and late goals by Lauren Arruda and Cameron Sheddenhelm put the game away as Kent State defeated the Cardinals 3-0. The Golden Flashes football team was also in action this weekend, traveling to Western Michigan and falling in their first MAC loss of the season to the Broncos, 64-31. That'll do it for our Week in Review. Up next, we'll visit with the president of the Student Athlete Advisory Committee, so stick around. I sat down with Flash's wide receiver and SAC president Isaac Vance to talk about his journey to Kent State and his time in Northeast Ohio. We had an absolute blast getting to know Isaac beyond his contributions on the field, so let's jump right in. Welcome back here to the Golden Flashes podcast. I'm your host, Tyler Henry. So good to have you in, and we have a very special guest here to open things up. It's Isaac Vance, a player here on the Kent State University football team. Isaac, thank you so much for coming in. It's great to have you. I appreciate you having me. I'm looking forward to it. So, you know, we talk about a lot of things. We'll have a chance to talk about some of your contributions, you know, off the field as well. You know, the president of SAC, we'll get into that in a moment, but I just wanted to ask you, first and foremost, you know, when did you fall in? love with the game of football at an early age you know my father being a college football coach I was kind of raised into it um and it's been a great thing because you know he didn't ever o- always push us you know I've got brothers that don't play football I got brothers that do play football but I fell in love with it from an early age and knew this is what I wanted to do and I know it's what I want to do the rest of my life with being a college football coach absolutely um you know again talking about where you're from from Los Cruces New Mexico how does a kid from New Mexico end up <laughs> all the way out here in Kent Ohio I'm sure a much different landscape than what you were used to growing up most definitely so I've moved around my whole life you know I've, I was born in, actually in Tennessee um, but I say I'm from Cruces because that's the easiest thing you know I've moved around I've bumped in a bunch of different states with my dad like I said being a coach um, but I ended up here actually my brother was a captain here in 2013 I want to say my pops actually coached here back in the day so I was I was living in the area for a little bit as a kid and I fell in love with Kent when I was, you know, I was six, seven, eight years old, and I was watching guys like Eugene Jarvis and and those guys run around Julian Edelman and all them, and they was coming over to the house and just I was becoming boys with them and realized this is where I wanted to play. It's incredible. So you know, it takes a lot to be a student athlete. It takes a lot to be a student athlete at a high level, and especially here in the group of five. I mean, this is a, this is a pretty elite group of schools mm-hmm. that you have the opportunity to to be a part of a program in. So let me ask you, you know, what what drives you, right? Like, what gets Isaac Vance out of bed in the morning? and ready to come to work every single day? My last name, you know, being able to do what I do and represent my family in a way that humbles them and and just, you know, the fortunate opportunity that I have to be here and be doing what you said, like I said, I'm playing here, playing a game, um, able to get my school paid for to play a game, and I know so many kids out the country would love to do that. So just being able to represent, represent my family in a positive way and just, you know, go out there and work every day. Absolutely. So, you know, we talked a little bit about kind of the the difference in scenery coming from New Mexico and and moving around, but let me just ask, you get to Kent, your first year here, you know, what what is your initial impression? Was it positive? Was it negative? You know, before you found your spots, you know, what's your first thought kind of looking around the area when you first landed here? It was gray. It was real gray. You know, (laughs) living in Cruces for five years, there's not a lot of gray. There's not a lot of rainy days. It was gray. It was cold. Um, I lived here as a kid, but as a kid, everything, everything had me, everything had me go lucky, you know, mm-hmm. so I didn't realize what the snow was really about. I didn't realize how it was driving the snow, um, but, you know, it was awesome. I chose camp for a reason, you know, sure. and it's the best decision I ever made in my whole life. Yeah, well, obviously, I, you know, I, we talked about this before. I went to Arizona State, so I'm used to the sun as well. This will be the first. Any tips for surviving the winter as we, uh, as we approach October, November? Get real boots. Okay. Get okay. a real coat. <laughs> Um, I thought I was going to be smooth. You know, I got a little Uggs, and I was walking <laughs> to class, and my feet was soaked every okay, day. So okay. get actual boots. They don't got to look good. Um, get some boots to keep your feet warm. That's the number one thing, and get a real coat. 
<laughs> All right, sounds good. So, you know, the, the weather's going to be changing here in, a, here in a little bit. But another thing that has changed a lot since you arrived, it's the culture around this program. It's it's Coach Lou. It's flash fast. Let me let me ask you, before we get into kind of the, the Coach Lou portion of this, your first year here, you know, this is not a program that was kind of known for, for its football aptitude. You know, what what was the biggest thing that really stood out to you when Coach Lewis walked in that door? You know, wh- what gave you the indication, this is the guy that's going to take us places? That he believed. You know, he believed from day one in that first press conference, he said what we was going to do, and we're going out there and accomplishing that. You know, he set the goals that we're going to graduate, we're going to win the East, we're going to win the wagon wheel. You know, we're going to go win the MAC championship and win the New Year's Six Bowl or whatever it may be by this time, maybe maybe a 12-team playoff. Who knows? We're going to get there, you know. And he set those goals out in the very first time. We ain't even met him yet. I was sitting at my house in South Carolina when that press conference was happening, you know, because it was winter break. And I'm like, all right, he's ready to go. Let's go get this thing done. So he's just ambitious, and he believed. Sure. What are what are some of the key differences? You know, and again, I'm not trying to ask you to throw anybody under the bus, but just the way you guys practice, the way you approach game prep, you know, from from kind of the what Coach Lewis has done to, you know, what maybe you guys did previously during some of those struggle years. Our tempo is crazy, you know, and our tempo doesn't even it doesn't even show what we do, you know, on the game days. It doesn't even show how practice is. We're moving around, we're flying around. Everything we do is flash fast, no matter what it is. That's just the way of life, and that's just how we live. And uh, you know, it's awesome. It's a great change, and you know, it's a great culture that we've established here. And Coach Lou and his staff has done a phenomenal job, brought the right people in, and surrounded us with a bunch of great uh, people to you know, allow us to have a lot of success. Sure. Yeah, I love the way you lead in with that. You said, you know, Coach Lou believed. It got you guys to believe. You know, at what point do you think the people of Kent, the student body, the the people in the athletics administration, when do you think they started to believe and really to kind of start to buy in? Because you've been here since the beginning of, of kind of this flash fast segment. I'd say it was week one against Illinois in 2018. You know, we went out there and we was up, I want to say 17-3 at halftime. And Everybody kind of bought in, you know, and as a football team that we don't take nothing in, you know, we don't have moral victories. We either win or we learn. Um, so the people around can't start talking and we blocked that out and we put our head down and just worked. And that's what we've been doing. You know, we worry about who's in our facility and what we can control is, is us. You know, so we go out, down, out there and try and perform every Saturday or Tuesday or Wednesday, whatever it might be, with action and, you know, just put our head down and work. Sure. I know that, you know, you talk about that locker room starting to believe even before that Northern Illinois game. But let me just ask you, was it a point during that game where you really thought to yourself, you know, now it's not just an idea. It's not just that we believe we can actually go out and do this against some of these other Mac opponents. I wouldn't even say it was during that game. You know, we once once Luke came in, we knew we had something special. We was excited. We knew it would take a lot of time, and, and it did take a lot of time. You know, we was we was three and six down whatever it was, 21 points versus Buffalo, you know, and very easily could have, you know, put our head between our legs and not wanted to finish that game. You know, but Coach Luke came in at halftime and wrote Believe on the board. And that's what we did. You know, we believed and we we had that special comeback. And since then, it's been history. You know, we've won, I think, seven straight home games since then and just have truly established the culture. Sure. You know, we talk a lot about culture. We talk about, you know, guys believing and buying in. But let me just also ask this. It doesn't just happen with Coach Lou. It doesn't just happen with a group of players. He has built really a coaching staff that mm-hmm. I think you look – top to bottom, you know, from from the guys that are coaching up the quarterbacks to the guys that are coaching some of the special teams guys. This is a coaching staff that has really done a lot of really good things. So, you know, elaborate on that and kind of how Coach Lou was able to build that up from the from the ground and some of the guys that maybe he kept around, but also just, I mean, there, there really is no hole in coaching when you look up and down this Kent State University program. Most definitely, you know, we're fortunate with a phenomenal staff. I think we have the best staff in the country, and quite frankly, it starts with Coach Sobel, our strength and conditioning coach, and I believe that was Coach Lou's first call and first hire, you know, because he knows that's the block of everything you know that's the cornerstone of the program is the strength and conditioning staff because they spend more time with us than anybody does throughout the year you know our coaches have regulations and time and they're on the road recruiting and we don't see them for we don't see them for a couple months throughout the season you know throughout the, or the postseason you know in the winter time we don't see them when they're on the road recruiting and we would coach Sobel every single day you know so coach Sobel has a phenomenal staff you know with coach Ori and coach C um, and they just do a great job building us up and making us faster and stronger and then like you touched on you know our actual football staff itself is top notch with coach Souders the offensive coordinator coach Kaufman you know running the defense and then coach Barton with special teams we just we've got a phenomenal staff and coach Lewis has put the right people in the right places to help us grow and succeed sure I think it's easy for people to look from the outside you know you see the receivers performing well you assume that that's on the receiving coach you see the DBs performing well you assume that's on the secondary coach but look into the personalities of some of these guys right who are kind of the most laid-back guys in that <laughs> locker room who are the coaches that are kind of keeping things light and you know maybe who are some of the coaches that you know when it's time to get amped up you look to them to, to really kind of fire this team for sure. I mean, Coach Sobel is always a juice guy. He's going. Okay. He's always going to have us ready to go. That does not surprise you know, me. Not at all. You, <laughs> you, know, you take one him, look at him. That's you see not him surprising. Running around on the sidelines with his cutoff shirt. <laughs> oh, he, yeah. he's always ready to roll. This medium. Um, 
But all of our coaches, I wish it was a medium. That's about a that's about a triple X, and he's still filling it out. That's a shot. So so don't let that get to his head. Uh, but I mean, our coaches, it's a phenomenal atmosphere. You know, I'm in the coaches' offices every day, just hanging out with them because that's just the type of atmosphere they've built. Coach Lou has an open door policy. His door is always open. You know, we go in there often and just hang out. You know, and that's the best part about having a younger coaching staff is they're very relatable. Um, it's not just always about ball for them. You know, it's ball is a big part of it, but we can go in there and I can sit there for an hour and we can't even talk about football. So that's just, you know, that's a phenomenal thing. Coach Barton, you know, he he truly cares about his players. You know, he's truly, he loves us unconditionally um, and he shows it, you know, he's he's a fire him up, kind of kind of a go-getter kind of guy. Um, coach Souter is my position coach, is a lot more laid back. You know, he loves us beyond belief, but he's so much more laid back and just relaxed and it's just, it's funny to see the differences in, in personalities on the staff, but they all get together so well, mess together so well, and that kind of that translates over to us. You know, we just we go out there and we play for them as much as we play for ourselves because we just we love them to death. Sure, and it's got to be easier to do that when these are guys that you know. From from what it sounds like, you can trust these guys off the field, right? You guys are you, you mean more to this coaching staff than the number on your back or the number of yards you put up on a given Saturday. For sure, one hundred percent. So let's talk a little bit about the team you guys have this year. You know, it's been fun to kind of build the program. You saw it from a spot where this program was not very good to, you know, you guys pull a couple of come from behind victories these last few weeks. And right now you're standing alone at the top of the Mac East at 2-0. and So tell me a little bit about, you talk about some of the holdovers from kind of the earlier days, guys like Dustin Crum that have, have kind of helped build this program as well. But you put the whole picture together this season. This team just feels like it's got a different kind of energy than it did last year in that COVID shortened year. For sure, you know we're excited to go out there and get to compete each and every week, um, and it's 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 been built up, you know, from the ground. The 2017 guys that we talk about, you know, there's not a lot of us left um, from the from the previous staff, but we've been able to establish a great culture, and then the coaches have brought in phenomenal recruits and phenomenal young guys that have are so young now. I guess you yeah. know we've had guys that it's crazy to me, but I look at people like Dante Cephas who's out there making plays for us, and he's going on his third year here. You know, it's crazy to think Jay Sean Pope going on his third year and then as well we brought in great transfers you know with Nikeen Johnson and Aaron Hackett and guys and then our running back room is phenomenal you know Marquez Cooper I look at him and I think Cooper's been here for a hundred years you know I feel like he's been here with me the whole ride but it's his second year here you know so we just we've got some great people in great places and, and it's going to be a special year. Sure let's talk a little bit about the offense obviously that is a big highlight of this program flash fast and you know again I think I heard a lot about it I saw it on film but until you're down there on a game day you don't realize how fast this <laughs> offense goes right like I'm trying to I'm trying to report from the sideline there's not time to get a sideline report in so uh, you know as a wide receiver you came in I know you did a lot um, in that core you know how how different was that for you but at the same time when you're when you're keeping guys back on their heels how fun is it to run that offense oh it's a blast you know it's a blast especially for me I came in as a running back so came as a running back I had to lose a, a good amount of weight to play receiver because as a slots we running around more than anybody it's it's absolutely insane how much we run around you know we've got our GPS's on at practice and I want to say on an average camp day we was running between 75 and 80, 8500 yards you know which is just insane going back and forth this and that but it's it's awesome you know being able to physically dominate teams and see their wills break you know there's plenty of times where I'll line up a receiver whoever may line up at receiver and we look out there and we got guys puking on the defense and that's just a testament again to our coaching staff and coach Sobel and those guys are having us to be the most physically conditioned team in the country and that's just a part of this offense sure you know, we talk a lot about the offense. We talk about what they've been able to do. But this team, part of what feels different, the defense has really stepped up and taken that next step this season to the point where even I know that those Big Ten games, you know, you guys come away 0-3 in those. But you look at those scores going into the half. And you've got, you've got some opponents that are three deep, you know, with guys that would start on any Mac roster. You've got them back on their heels as well. So, you know, how has that been? What has it been like for you to kind of see that progression? And what is your confidence level with here in your final year um, that this defense, man, if they need to go out and get a stop, they can go out and get a stop? Oh, it's great. You know, we've got all the trust in the world in our defense, and they've done a phenomenal job this offseason, you know, putting the right pieces in the right places and just believing, you know, that defense is our second year in this in this system. And Coach Kaufman and those guys have done a great job. You know, Coach Cox has been a huge contribution to the defense as well as Coach Macrinos. And then obviously we got Coach Stalker who's, who's came in and then Coach Farrell to hold down the D-line, you know. So our coaches have done a phenomenal job. They get along great. You know, I live with A.J. Mussolino, so I hear a lot, and K.J. as well. You know, I hear a lot from the defensive side of the ball, and they just, they believe, you know, they've got a, an, you know, each side of the ball has their own individual culture as well as a team culture, and the defense just believes. You know, they're physical. They force a lot of turnovers, and that's just that's phenomenal. You know, so I trust those guys more than more than anybody, and I know if they got to go out there and get a stop, they'll get the job done for us. Sure. 
So, you know, I, I go back and I watch that video. Obviously, I wasn't a part of this program back in, you know, 2019, back when you guys pulled the, the victory uh, out against Buffalo to come from behind. But the one thing I do notice, you watch the video on that, you know, the, the highlights are amazing, but you look back in that student section, it's, it's pretty light. <laughs> you know, the, the fan section is pretty light. You go into a game against Bowling Green in your home MAC opener in a game where, you know, again, it's, it's your first game of the season, you're at home. That place was rocking. I mean, it, and that is not something that we have necessarily seen. But how great is it for you to, to know that you had a hand in building that and that, you know, not only do you see the results now coming on the field, but you see the results and people showing up on a Saturday. It's great. You know, it's a real college football atmosphere. And that's just that's everything you dream of as a kid. Hearing about the traffic jams, hearing about the lack of parking is a, is a great problem to have. You know, and that's a testament, again, to Randall Richmond, our new AD, and Greg Gloss and those guys, and just promoting what we've built here. You know, we've, we've put in a lot of hard work, and our job is to go out there and win on Saturdays, you know, to, in between the white lines to, to win. So just getting that recognition is great, and it's awesome, but at the same time, you know, I'm happy for the students to be able to have a true college football experience. You know, it's the, it's the greatest game in the world for a reason, and I think it's absolutely awesome seeing Dick Stadium packed every Saturday. Sure. A big part of that college football experience that you talk about, man, homecoming week, I mean, that's got to be that's got to be big for you guys. But did it, did it feel different this year? You know, did you did you feel like it was just there was a bigger buzz around it as you guys headed into that game? And really, the, the whole week leading up to it uh, with a lot of the activities at homecoming. For sure. I mean, homecoming is always a special time. You know, and we always know that's going to be a big crowd for us, but there is nothing like this. You know, the whole Pack Dick's 20K trend was phenomenal. It was all over social media media and it was great you know we we try and tone up the noise as much as we can but at the same time we're still you know 18 to 23 year old college kids so we're on social media and we see the buzz and it's phenomenal you know it's just it's truly special to to realize that that's happening from what we've created here you know and we got a long way to go but it's just it's just a part of the special the special season that's come to come so off, off the field you know was there anything that you you guys kind of took part in you know with with homecoming week prior to that any of the festivities or was it kind of just you know all, all about flash fast all about flash fast all football about flash all about fast. beating bowling green that week and getting one and oh and winning that championship week absolutely well hey you guys come away with the win so i guess ultimately that's Most that's definitely. what matters let's uh let's move it here and talk about you know this this recent win against buffalo this was a, a weird game i guess from from where i was standing it seemed like you know this was previewed as, as a heavyweight bout coming into this max season and it seemed like kent state you know they, they knocked down buffalo in that first half but it, it almost seemed like there was a sense that you know buffalo they got up off the mat fast so what was the adjustment like uh, in the fourth quarter? But, you know, again, as you're kind of watching this this Bulls team come back on you in that third quarter, you know, was there ever a sense of, you know, we might be in trouble? Or, or was the confidence level still high, you know, that entire quarter up until you guys came back and won it? Buffalo is a great program. You know, they're established. They have a new coaching staff, but they still got a lot of great players and a great team, quite frankly. So as much as we would have loved to go out there and, you know, it's 31-10 at halftime and just step on their throats the second half and truly assert our dominance, I'm proud of our guys and how we, I mean, they scored 28 points in 14 minutes, you know, and took the lead. So it would have been real easy for us to kind of, all right, man, here it goes again. I just blew a lead, like, and just and give up. And that was there wasn't an ounce of that on the sideline. You know, we knew that whole time it's going to be a four-quarter dogfight, and that's what we signed up for, and that's what, that's what Maxion is, you know, especially with us in Buffalo. The past two years, we've kind of turned it into a little rivalry, and we have mm -hmm. great games with them, you know, and it's two teams that truly respect each other and just that will fight for four quarters, you know. So I'm proud of our guys to be able to, to be resilient. You know, that was a really resilient win, and, you know, we were able to come back and win by 10, and it was just, you know, that fourth quarter was special. Yeah. You know, we had we knew what we was going to do, and we just went out there and we fought for four quarters like like we've trained for all summer. You talk about that rivalry with Buffalo, and man, there was just there was a different energy on that sideline before that game. It feels like you know Kent State they felt like they got cheated out of a win potentially last year that that maybe you guys left some stuff on the field and. Now, I'm telling you, the end of that game, the energy after the victory, it seemed like there was a sense that that win meant a little bit more to you guys as well. You know, Buffalo and Kent State have kind of been intertwined all throughout this this flash fast program being built. So, you know, how big was it to get a win over a team like that? And, and does it, you know, feel like one of those marquee program wins, you know, to come back again? And now you, you've got that confidence to take into this week. It's a great win because it's the next one. You know, it's always great to win um, any game. It's all, even better to win a MAC game. It's even sweeter to win a MAC East game. You know, so being able to get to two and zero because of that win was phenomenal. Um, you know, we like like you said, we've had some some drag out fights with them from the twenty one point comeback in the fourth quarter to twenty nineteen to frankly us getting embarrassed last year as a whole program at Buffalo. You know, riding high riding high on our horse and then going up there and just getting beat seventy to forty one. You know, so that's been a bitter taste in our mouth 
all off season because we played that game. That was our last game of the 2020 season. So this game, it was a special game because it was the next game. But you know, I'd be lying if I didn't say it was a little, it meant a little something different being able to go out there and beat those guys in front of our home crowd and, and get the two and zero in the MAC. Sure. Let's take things off the field for a little bit here. Obviously, you know, I know, I know, you spend a ton of time in film sessions with coaches, you know, in practices and games. But you know, you're also in addition to being a student, you know, you're a person like everybody else. And I think sometimes people lose sight of that when it comes to when it comes to student athletes. You are the president of the student athlete advisory committee better known as SAC and you know tell me a little bit about how you got involved with that um and also you know just some of the work that you guys do that that I think sometimes goes a little under understated by people most definitely you know I got involved with it I don't even remember it was like it was my freshman year and Katie Schilling um who's our student athlete coordinator came up to me and asked if it's something I want to be involved in and I didn't really I didn't know much about it I said yeah sure why not so I was on it me and Will Matthews and we was on it we was always cracking jokes and doing this and doing that and and it just kind of became an opportunity for me to, you know, hop into a leadership role. And I was able to hop into that leadership role. Quite frankly, I hopped into a leadership role in the conference before I did with our own SAC. Um, I, I was able to talk to some people and get involved with our conference level SAC and meet a lot of great people. And then this past year, I was, I guess, selected to be our president of the, the SAC, you know, here on campus. And it's just, it's awesome. You know, we do a lot to help student athletes because like you said, you know, people see us as student athletes and that's about it. They see us to play the game and they don't realize we're, we're actually people, you know, behind the helmet, off the court and whatever it may be. So being able to just pe get people involved and always be there for people and let people know that, you know, you've got a whole support cast there for you. It's just it's, it's a blessing. Sure. How do you feel like, you know, your your involvement with SAC helped you grow not only as a person, but as a leader as well? And has that kind of translated into the way that you've been able now in your fifth year at Kent State to, to lead some of these guys on the football field? Yeah, it's, it's been great, you know, getting to know people. And it's a, I think it's awesome just being able to network with people all the time, you know, being able to be that smiling face for somebody and, and let people know that if you ever need anything, I'm there for you. You know, it's helped me and my leadership roles, you know, being able to – I have to – manage my time a lot better now you know I also have to manage my image a lot better and just you know constantly realize that people is always looking up to us as student athletes you know no matter what age or, or where they're at in their life is we've got a huge platform we have to use that platform to, to bless others and to you know impact others as well sure so you know you said it best right like sometimes people look at these student athletes and you know they they do kind of see it in terms of the numbers right like how many how many receiving yards did, did this guy put up last week how many tackles did he have right so I know obviously it's important to, to kind of get to know the athlete themselves, but also the person off the field. So what are what are some things that a lot of people that show up to an average Kent State game don't know about you um, that, are, that are that are pretty big parts of your personality, right? Like what makes what makes Isaac Vance Isaac Vance outside of football? Oh man, I love to laugh. I love to smile. I love to have fun with my friends. You know, we we have a we have a great house at eight oh nine. So we call us. Uh, we just love we love hanging out. You know, something that the fans. You, know, you might know about me, you might not, depending on if you if you ever go to Birdie Shack, because I love putt putt. I'm a big okay, okay. I'm a big putt putter. Um, I'll toot my own home for a little bit. You know, I'm I'm all over the leaderboard over there at Birdie Shack, so it's just you know we love putt putt. We love just having fun, just you know spending. We spend a lot of time at the football field in the film room, but. Whenever we have a chance to go out there and just do something that gets our mind off of football, it's, it's a blast. Sure. Well, I, I've been known to, to partake in some pup up myself. Okay. I may have to go try to try to get my name down Most there definitely. and uh, see if somebody <laughs> pass you up. But, you know, it, it's also, you know, it takes so much effort, so much energy, and so much time to be a student athlete, to, to be in the classroom, to keep those grades up, to, to be on the field, to perform well. But when you do have time to kind of you know, let that let go and re unwind a little bit, you talk about, you know, obviously hanging out with the guys. But, you know, what are some things that you do just when you're by yourself to, to kind of stop and just reset so you can continue to perform at such a high level for sure you know I like to reflect a lot you know because like you said we're always on the go and there's always that next appointment that I have to be at you know the next meeting I have to do or whatever it may be so whenever I have a chance to just sit down and reflect unwind play some music relax and just I think you know I'm a big thinker I think about a lot of things and just I reflect on, on what my day was and what my week was in the past, as well as, you know, I, I try and stay in the Word as much as I can and do a daily devotional and just keep myself rooted and just realize that there's a lot more to life than football, even though that's kind of what is consuming, you know, our lives at the moment. You you led me perfectly right into it. There There is a lot more than football, but at the same time, I know football is something that you want to continue to stay in after college. So, you know, you're a grad student this year, probably probably the last year that you'll be on the field. But let me ask, you know, what what's next? What's next for Isaac Vance after uh, after this year is so complete? I've thankfully got another year. I do. Oh, okay, I've okay. got another year because COVID. COVID. So we've all got six years and all that. It's, and it's crazy. This whole year, yeah, it really is. Right? So I I technically I could have had two more years. So okay. 
obviously I tore my ACL and stuff in sure, the spring sure. and I was supposed to be out this entire season. I was supposed to be cleared until January and I got that medical register. So technically I could have two more, um, but I'm coming back this year and been playing the past couple of weeks to not so much avoid that, but just to be able to contribute to our guys, sure. you know, but um, my future, I want to get into coaching. I want to get into college coaching. Um, it would, you know, it would be awesome if I could get in with coach Lewis and those guys, cause I've, I've officially fallen in love with the flash fast offense. Um, growing up, I never thought that, you know, I would want to partake in this style of offense. It just wasn't me. And just my dad's a defensive coordinator, so he's kind of, you know, he sees offense as a different view. And and I never thought that I'd want to be in this type of offense, but I fall in love with it, man. I enjoy it. I, uh, I've studied it as much as I possibly can. And, you know, my goal is to become a college football coach. So I'd, I'm sure in the next couple of years, become a GA somewhere and try and get my first full-time job somewhere. So uh, how how helpful has it been to have the kind of coaches that you have around here, not just for you as a player, but for you potentially as a future coach? You know, how much have you learned just by, you know, seeing the way that this Kent State staff kind of handles their business week in and week out? It's been awesome. I've learned so much football. Um, football IQ has, has gone up exponentially, you know, as well as just it's easy to, you know, it's easy to be happy and, and see success when it's been sustained, you know, but the fact that we've changed the culture here and I now know how to change the culture of a program and see how Coach Lou truly did it, um, that's that's as much coaching experience as I could have gained out of anything. Sure. So, you know, I have to ask, you know, if, if you had a one-time pass to pick your job anywhere oh. in the world tomorrow, you can work anywhere. Where are you working? I can't do that right now. You can't do that I can't right do now. that right now. You don't have a, you don't have a NFL team, a college program? No, you see, I want to I want to stay in college. Okay. And okay. I've still got, you know, some years of eligibility left. Sure. So I could possibly sure. play, be playing some teams, you know, in, the, in the near future. No, I understand. Um, so I can't, I can't give that right now. Sure. You talked about it before. A lot of people, you know, don't necessarily get to know these athletes. We're going to get to know you a little bit right now. We still got some time here on the Golden Flashes podcast. We like to have a little bit of fun. So I'm going to fire off some questions at you here and, and just, you know, get people a chance to get to know you a little bit better. Um, than maybe what they do. So let me let me start with this. You get to pick four musical artists to go on to your ultimate tour. Who's the headliner, and who are the three guys backing them up? Oh man, that's hard. Any um, genre, any anything at all. And they don't gotta mix them. No, they don't have to match. mix it all. This can be the most bizarre oh, tour that you've man. ever put together. But for the mo for your listening enjoyment, okay. who is going on the Isaac Vance tour? Okay, right now I'm big on Rod Wave, so he's okay, my headliner. Okay. Rod Wave's my headliner for sure. All right. Um, Lecrae, who's a Christian rapper, you know, he's okay. big time. Yep. I love Lecrae, I've listened to him my whole life. Oh, man, I'd probably say, I don't know, see, I ain't really big in music. Um, Lecrae, really? Not really, okay, you know. Okay, okay. I, I listen to everything, whatever the guys you play in the locker room. Sure. Rod Wave, Lecrae for sure. Um, I'd probably say Chris Tomlin, who's a contemporary Christian artist as well. Okay. And then my fourth one, oh, man, I don't know. Um... No questions. Nikeen Johnson. I'll throw him Nike out there. Johnson? No questions. Okay. My guy. All I'll right. put him on there, too. He's he, right. he been coming with some heat. Dropped a new album, I think, two weeks ago. and It's coming. So, no questions. Nikeen Johnson. He, he can rap a little all bit. All right. All right. Sounds good. Yeah, he's solid. So, this is, a, this is a hot topic of debate. And you and I, you know, we were in the same area for a while. People are wildly different about this. But if you had to choose, are you living in the mountains or are you living on the beach? On the beach, <laughs> no right, doubt. Right. On the beach, my people live in Charleston, now, South Carolina now, okay, so okay. I've got to experience that on vacations. And there's nothing better than after you know our season, it's snowing up here, and I hop on a plane, and I dr I fly down to Charleston, South Carolina, and my toes are in the sand for the next couple of weeks. So right. there ain't nothing better than that. Gotta love the beach. I'm not trying to give any uh, any Kent State opponents any any cannon fodder here, but do you have any irrational fears? Snakes. Snake? That's not irrational. That makes sense. I mean, I mean not, anything that no, moves that nothing. fast and can kill you with a bite. Nah, nothing. I ain't really scared of much. All um, right. And that's not just, I just, I don't know. I don't really, nah, I ain't got, All right. really All snakes right. is my biggest fear. Okay, that, that's, like, that's, that's, a, that's a fair one. That like that's like, fair. yeah. All right. Um, let me ask you this. This is, this is probably the most important question you'll ever get asked at any point on any interview. And All I want right. you to remember, this is recorded. So For people sure. will know. You, you get one shot at this. All right. Is a hot dog a sandwich? No. All right. It's not. All and right. that's funny because we've asked that question on our podcast in the spring. Of course. Is a hot dog a sandwich? No, it's not. It's okay. not a sandwich. A hot dog is a hot dog. Okay. So you don't believe a Pop-Tart is a ravioli either? <laughs> what? <laughs> nah. Okay. I, nah, I, I, a Pop-Tart is a Pop-Tart. I just like, yeah, you know, this nah. is, these are things that we need answers. A Pop-Tart right? is a ravioli. I'm nah, I ain't never even heard that. I'm about to put my hair up for that one. Um, <laughs> that's fair. That's fair. Nah. All right. Pop-Tart ain't no ravioli. Which... Of, of, you know, Madden 2K, you know, everything else. Which sports game are you the best at? 
I don't play video games no more. Okay. I haven't played a video game by myself since the eighth grade. Wow. But All right. ain't nobody want to see me in the old NCAAs, that's for sure. What school you play as? I know this was before your Kent it, State time. <laughs> yeah, it depends so you, you the year. It depends the year. Um, I mean, I actually did play with Kent State a lot with my brother okay. being on the game. And, you know, I was, I've grown up a Kent State fan my whole life. So I played with Kent a lot. Um, I enjoyed playing with, you know, the Virginia Techs when they had some dual threat quarterbacks, um, depending on the year. I enjoy playing with, you know, Georgia. Um, they're always fun with the running back cores that they had with no Sean Marino and then back in the day. So I would say Georgia's probably my number one team to play with. All right. Let me ask you, who was your favorite college athlete growing up? Who is your favorite current non-Kent State college athlete to watch? And who is the toughest player that you have had to go against <laughs> at any point during your time at Kent State? All right, run that back for me. My favorite, favorite growing up. college athlete growing up. Okay, Eugene Jarvis, war number six here at Kent State. It's okay. a big reason why I'm here. He's a huge role model for me. My dad recruited him, and I still talk to him to this day. So right. watching him, you know, as an undersized running back like he was and like I was, you know, he was he was my biggest role model I was on the field. Currently, who I enjoy watching, oh, man. Um, I don't know. Who I enjoy watching currently that's not on Kent State's team. <sighs> That's a tough question. I'm trying to think of people. Um, Tell you what, let me let me get you because I know you guys focus pretty heavily on Saturday. You're focused on what you guys are doing for sure. Sunday. You get some time to relax. Who's your favorite NFL athlete? Just to watch. Tyreek Hill's fun to watch. He is very He's fun to watch in the slot. Um, I've always been a big Cam Newton guy just because okay. I love his style. Okay. I love his you know his confidence. So him not being on the team right yeah. now is kind of it's kind of a bummer. Of, big rest in peace you know, hopefully he was... can find back on the team. Yep. But I'm not I'm not a huge NFL guy, quite okay. frankly. So. But I guess Tyreek Hill, I can go with him playing slot myself and right. watching the things he do in the slot is, is impressive. And then who is, who is the toughest player you've had to go up against? Michael Parsons. Okay. <laughs> Trying to okay. block Michael Parsons when he was a true freshman at Penn State wasn't, <laughs> wasn't very fun. You know, we had, we had some good back and forth. So, sure. uh, <laughs> yeah, Michael Parsons for sure. And then watching, I mean, getting to watch Lamar Jackson my freshman year was, sure. thankfully I wasn't on the defense side of the ball for that. But watching him do his thing over there was fun too. Absolutely. Um, in terms of your career here at Kent State, do you have, I mean, I know it's, it's tough, but do you have one play that kind of stands out to you as, as kind of your, your ultimate highlight that when you look back on your time at KSU, you know, that's, that's a, a high high for you? Oh, man. Um, I'm trying to think. Individually, I mean, I don't know. I mean, my school. I would say, I mean, there's two. The play against Buffalo in 2019 where I recovered the muff punt, which kind of got the got the ball rolling for us mm -hmm. on special teams for that comeback was big as a team aspect. And then last year versus school on the road, I muffed a punt. <laughs> and then later on in the third quarter, I had a decent one-handed catch. So I would say, I mean, that's, that's probably up there for a little bit. All right, fair enough. Well, I believe that is about all the time that we have here on the Golden Flashes podcast. Isaac Vance, thank you so much for coming on. We appreciate your time, and it has been uh, so good to get to know you a little bit better. Best of luck with the rest of your season. Thank you. I appreciate y'all having me. Now let's look ahead to see what's coming up for the Golden Flashes in the next few weeks. The Kent State volleyball team will be back in action for the tail end of their MAC schedule this week. The Flashes will travel to Ohio on Wednesday, October 20th, before returning to the MAC Center for their final two home games this weekend, taking on Buffalo on Friday and Saturday. The Kent State women's soccer team will also have their final home game of 2021 this week, hosting Central Michigan on Thursday. The Flashes are in a position to potentially finish atop the MAC, so be sure to come out and support the team at 7 p.m. All three home games this weekend will be broadcast live. You can catch soccer on BoxCast and both volleyball matches against Buffalo on ESPN3. Wrapping up the weekend, the Kent State football team will stay on the road looking for a big bounce back win at Ohio. Kickoff between the Flashes and Bobcats is scheduled for 1 p.m. A special thanks to Isaac Vance for taking some time out of his day to talk with us. This podcast is produced by Nick Kane, Yvonne Korsakoff, and Lexi Majoris. I'm your host, Tyler Henry. Thank you so much for listening, and go Flashes.